this is our presentation on meiosis by Emma and Maddie, and throughout this presentation we're going to walk through each step of meiosis, and we're also going to see how meiosis is, is able to reduce the chromosome number from a diploid cell to haploid. Meiosis is the process by which haploid cells are produced from a cell that was originally diploid, which we can see in this diagram of meiosis. So we start off with a diploid cell and after going through two separate meiotic divisions, which consist of meiosis 1, which first separates homologous chromosomes, and then secondly going through meiosis 2, which separates sister chromatids, we end up with a total of four haploid cells. And so meiosis is also the basis for sexual reproduction. The first step in meiosis is prophase 1, and this is when replicated chromosomes condense and homologous chromosomes join together to form bivalence, which we can see here in version 1 and in version 2 as well. And it's also, prophase 1 is also when crossing over can occur, and we're going to be talking about crossing over in detail on the next slide. And so this is also when the nuclear envelope begins to dissociate, and it's also when the centrosomes begin to move to opposite poles of the cell, which are here, and they're about to start moving, and it's also when the meiotic spindle begins to form as well. So in our two versions here, we are starting with a diploid cell, so these are both diploid, and they contain four chromosomes each. And they contain two chromosomes from the maternal side, or from the mother, and they contain two from the father. So crossing over occurs during prophase one of meiosis, and it occurs right after homologous chromosomes pair together to form bivalence, or they're also called tetrads. And so it's when, when they come together to form a bivalent, non-sister chromatids, so speaking of meaning one from the maternal side and one from the paternal side, not, these non-sister chromatids exchange homologous portions or genetic material. And so the physical exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids is basically what crossing over is. So we can see that going on right over here. And the point at which the non-sister chromatids cross over each other to exchange genetic information is called a chiasma or a chiasma. And crossing over increases genetic variation within a species because of this exchange in DNA. And so once the crossing over has, is complete, these chromatids are now called recombinant because they contain a mix of both maternal and paternal genetic information. And so we can see here in our cell below that these large chromosomes have already crossed over some genes from the maternal side to the paternal side. You can see that the large red chromosome has some genes from the paternal side and the large yellow, which is the paternal, contains some from the maternal side. The next step in meiosis is metaphase one. And this is when homologous chromosomes are attached to, micro to microtubules by their centromeres, which we can observe here in each of our variations. And so bivalents line up side by side or next to each other along the metaphase plate or the equator down the middle of the cell. And for each pair of homologous chromosomes, one chromosome will be randomly selected to separate into each new haploid cell. And so this process is called independent assortment, and this also leads to genetic variation within cells. And so homologous chromosomes, again, like I said, align randomly, allowing for genetic variation among future haploid cells. And so we can see in version one, both maternal chromosomes have aligned on along one side of the meta metaphase plate, and the both paternal have, al have aligned on the other side. However, in version two, a maternal and a paternal have aligned on one side, while a paternal and maternal have aligned on the other side. And here is the photo of metaphase one for our crossed over pair. You can see that they have lined up along the middle, and they're attached to their microtubules by their centrum centromeres, and we can still see their crossing over right there. And so now let's move on to anaphase 1. So anaphase 
Phase one is when the homologous chromosomes separate towards opposite poles of the cell. And these homologous chromosomes are pulled toward the opposite poles by the kinetochore microtubules that have attached to their centromeres. And so this, each pair of sister chromatids is still attached to each other. It's just that the homologous chromosomes have separated. And while this is going on, while this separation is going on, polar microtubules that extend throughout the length of the cell are lengthening and pushing the poles apart, elongating the cell. And so we can see here version one, both maternal chromosomes on one side and both paternal on the other. And one maternal is on version two and one paternal on one side while one paternal and one maternal on the other. And here's our crossing crossed over pair for anaphase one. We can see homologous chromosomes are separating microtubule kinetochores are shortening and pulling each set of sister chromatids toward their respective pole, and the cell has begun to elongate. The final steps in meiosis I are telophase I and cytokinesis. So telophase I consists of the chromosomes reaching their respective poles, and they also begin to decondense once they reach their poles. And the nuclear envelope begins to reform, producing two separate nuclei. And cytokinesis refers to when the cleavage furrow forms and constricts the cell, separating the two new daughter cells. And here we show version one, and we can see both paternal and maternal pairs of sister chromatids in their own cell. And in version two, we have one maternal and one paternal paired together, while the other contains one paternal and one maternal as well. And the result of my Meiosis I is two haploid cells, as we can see in each version, two haploid cells that do not contain pairs of homologous chromosomes. These are not homologous chromosomes, these are only separate pairs of sister chromatids. And just to clarify, the small yellow and small red, so the small yellow would be paternal and the small red would be maternal, these are the homologous chromosomes because based on size, they are homologous. And we see here, large yellow and large red, these are the homologous chromosomes, and they are separated in each new diploid cell. And so here's the photo for our telophase one and cytokinesis crossed over pair. And we can see they're actually, our new diploid cells here are quite similar to our version two. However, we can't forget about the crossing over that occurred back in prophase one, where the paternal contains several maternal genes, and the maternal, one maternal homologous chromosomes contains several paternal genes. So prophase two starts off the second meiotic division, which is meiosis two, and this is when sister chromatodes, oh, <laughs> chromatids condense into highly compacted structures, and the mitotic spindle begins to form again, and the nuclear envelope begins to dissociate, and centromeres also begin to move towards opposite ends of the cell, which we can see here. And these are basically the same photos from our telophase one cytokinesis. And here is our photo for prophase two of our crossed over pair. And so let's move on to metaphase two. Metaphase two is when the sister chromatids are attached to our to the microtubules by their centromeres, which we can observe here. We can see in each diploid cell they're attached to microtubule kinetochores, and the sister chromatids line up along the metaphase plate. And independent assortment can again occur as well, just as it occurred in metaphase one, and the alignment along the equator allows for the chromatids to be equally distributed into four new or two new daughter cells per diploid cell. And so let's take a look at our metaphase two crossed over pair. Very similar again to our version one, except for we have to remember crossing over had occurred. Okay, so moving on to anaphase two. So now the microtubules begin to shorten and as they're shortening, they're pulling the sister chromatids towards their respective poles, or towards the poles that they are attached to. 
So in doing this, the sister chromatids, which were once attached, they are now separated and have now become individual chromosomes. And so all the while, while they're being separated and pulled towards their respective poles, polar microtubules that stretch the length of the cell are again lengthening it and elongating it, pushing the poles further apart from each other. And so here we can see our photo for our crossed over pair. Sister chromatids being pulled apart, so now the individual chromosomes are going towards their respective poles.